everyone. Welcome to Trading Hour on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ikta Batra and with me is Reema Tendulkar. Well, it's turning out to be a session where we're definitely seeing some amount of a mixed trend for the market. So we have the Nifty and the Sensex, which are lower. So the Nifty is down around three tenths of a percent. We have the Sensex, which is down over 100 points. But we have the Mid Cap Index, which is managing to hold its head above the water. So up around half a percent currently for the Mid Cap Index. In fact, a good advanced decline ratio on our hands as well. In terms of stocks and focus, a lot to discuss. So for example, example, TCS, HCL Tech, both those stocks sulking, a lot of the IT stocks sulking, TCS is ex-dividend, but separately because of the rupee appreciation and something like a Sun Pharma and Dr. Reddy's on account of uh, news within the pharmaceutical space. This is just a glance of all the stocks that we're going to discuss over the next one hour. Hi, Reema. Hi, Ekta. But the momentum has fizzled out a bit, at least at the benchmark index yeah. level, after scaling those record yeah. levels yesterday. And on the subject of IT and the weakness that we're seeing, now take uh, just take the instance of TCS. Now, TCS is down nearly 50 points, but it's gone ex-dividend only to the tune of 18 rupees, which means about 32 rupees have, you know, have come under pressure on account of TCS in line with the rest of the pack on account of the rupee appreciation. So that gives you a sense it's not just the ex-dividend factor. Wipro is bucking the trend in the IT pack and that's an account of the 10,500 crore uh, buyback which has now got the shareholder approval and therefore now the record date has been set. So Wipro is bucking the trend and that's higher. And there is momentum in the broader markets as she said. The index is higher by half a percent. Uh, Midcap banks are looking good. So Union Bank, IDBI Bank, OBC are all up and about in trade. Yesterday you had auto stocks uh, you know, do well despite the weakness in the numbers. Uh, today tire stocks are looking good. So SEAD, Apollo Tires, a couple of the other names which should uh, you know, come up for you on your screen. And after the big crunching fall that they've seen at the start of the since the start of the year, these stocks are down about ten to you know fifteen to twenty percent. Now they're showing you some signs of life. But let's uh, talk about the market technicals and try and tell you how you can trade this market. So that's Sukhani of S2 Analytics.com joins in for a technical check on the markets. Uh, so that's it's moving a bit sideways. The Nifty is giving you a bit of a dip. Would you buy it? Yes, this is a dip after that lifetime new high which was crossed yesterday. Uh, see, lifetime new highs are generally buying opportunities because they display strength. So I would buy this dip for an intraday trade or even a carry. Uh, remember, tomorrow is a holiday. So buy this, uh, buy the Nifty at current levels. Keep a stop under 11,980. The best, if you want to carry this position, you can. But if you want to carry it, then you should use call options rather than futures. And for intraday, you can do anything. Okay, what are the stocks, uh, Sudarshan, that you'll be recommending today? Well, uh, I would suggest buying ICICI Bank. Uh, it is an outperformer, and the chances are that if the Nifty stabilizes or even goes up a little today, ICICI Bank should be a major contributor. The second buy idea is LNT. LNT was spoken about in the morning also. I have spoken about it many times. It's an investment idea, it's a trading idea, both. For the day, it's a buy, buying opportunity. But for investors, you should be looking to put it in your portfolio. I also have Glenmark, which is a short sell uh, just for the day, but primarily focus on the long trades. No mid cap uh, buy idea, Sudarshan? Well, uh, the markets uh, have given us a sense that they might be choppy or just uncertain today. So it's better to focus on the bigger names. Okay, all right, uh, Sudarshan. Well, we have a Twitter query. Chandra Mohan has 25 shares of Maruti, which is bought at 7,500. He wants to know your long-term view on the stock. Well, auto, the auto sector is subdued as of now, but Maruti is the best of the lot in autos. So I think you should now wait patiently. Don't buy any more, but stay with it. And if you if you are looking at an outlook for five years, I'm sure Maruti will do very well. It's it's a it's one of the better stocks in the universe. So just hold it. 50% market share in the passenger vehicles. That's what Maruti commands. So when the cycle turns, Maruti should be the beneficiary. So Darshan, thanks so much for joining in. That's the advice on uh, Maruti. Uh, hold on to it, but now is not the time to buy it. Uh, let's get you a big CNBC TV18 exclusive. Lata Venkatesh caught up with Abhinav Khanna, the head of equities at City India, and Agnes Richardson, the head of Pan Asia Distribution at City Group Global Markets Asia. She began by asking them for their assessment of the global economy and the seriousness of the growth scare. We think the markets misplaced uh, material change in the geopolitical uh, landscape 
in the last four weeks. So these bond market moves are a reflection of, of tensions. Uh, we feel um, quite strongly that China's been very restrained so far in terms of its retaliation on the trade front and we think there's a bigger issue at play and that's around technology rivalry. Okay. And we expect in the medium and long term for that to continue to escalate. Okay. So any short term um, lack of tension between the US and, and China will be offset by this technology rivalry. So I think the bond markets are reflecting and signalling uh, a potential uh, material slowdown in, in global economic growth. Why are Indian equities not reacting? I, I think they hold in a difficult uh, EM Asian universe at, at the moment uh, defensive attributes. So the outflows out of China and Hong Kong uh, continue and the money that is managed in that emerging market bucket uh, has to reinvest somewhere okay. and post the election um, and, and, and the outlook, even though the short term is difficult, uh, India has been uh, the benefit of those flows. Okay, but uh, more broadly from now to the rest of say 2019, uh, where do you think smart money will go? Does it leave DMs and come to EMs? Does it leave EMs and go back yeah. to DMs? Fantastic question. Uh, at, at the moment, oh, oh, within DM, uh, we favour uh, the US over, over Europe and, and Japan. The reason we favour the US is we expect as fiscal stimulus wanes, you'll start getting more dovish signals and rate cuts coming uh, from the Fed as growth slows. That may in turn lead to a weaker US dollar which is very important for emerging market Asia. So we actually slightly favour emerging market Asia over developed equities. It has valuation support However, in the very, very short term, there is still some downside risk. Okay. Oh, well, let me come to you, Abhinav, on this issue. Uh, I mean, are you comfortable with the way in which Indian equities are reaching out despite this rather negative global environment? So, yes, uh, the valuations certainly are at a premium even to their longer term mean. Uh, we are trading around 1.5 times standard deviation, so the markets clearly look rich compared to the earnings which, which the companies can deliver. But having said that, I go back to Angus's point when he mentioned that in the global context, India looks like a bit of a safe haven uh, given that we have political stability, we are relatively more insulated to all these uh, trade tensions. And lastly, I guess on a lighter note, how bad could it get you know, on the GDP and the earnings? Uh, I know it can go even below 5.8, which was Q4. But I guess the base is now so low, and the government really has got the mandate to, to potentially pump prime the economy and try to lift the consumer sentiment and, and the corporate sentiment as well. And lastly, the, the financial sector hopefully uh, would have seen the worst in FI19 and with the credit costs going down and recoveries starting to come into the bottom line of the banks, uh, earnings could actually go back to double digit in FI20. So if that happens, uh, India should be able to outperform uh, the broader uh, emerging markets and global markets. When you say double digit, it's not a great uh, distance from the 9% yeah. that we have done in FI19. Sure. Uh, what kind of earnings expectations in FI20? Yeah, good question. It's almost like a trick question because we've started each of the last five years with 20% earnings growth and we ended so below 10%. This time 10%. some people even had 24. Yeah, sure. So, so again, we start the year with 21% earnings growth. Uh, but I guess um, with, with, the, with the financial sector trigger which I just mentioned, so for us more than 70% of this 21% earnings growth is going to come from the financial sector. There could be some risk if the macro recovery does not happen in the first uh, half of the year. 
And if we don't see consumption recovery, you talked about the auto numbers you know, a short while back. If we don't see that kind of a recovery in the first half, there could be downside to the full year numbers. But I would say that we, we should probably still end up in mid-teens or low-teens uh, instead of being as bad as 9.5%. But if we get 21%, then the market could clearly re-rate from here. But otherwise, I think that low teens to mid teens is quite possible. Okay, so uh, at the moment, you, you would still buy India, as you said, you're, uh, even with this kind of a growth expectation, we are, uh, even with 20% growth expectation, we are still trading at one and a half times uh, standard deviation. So one is the increase in foreign allocation to India. The second bit is the domestic flows supporting. So I would say that India, yes, there is you know lack of valuation cushion, but we could still outperform in a relative context. Okay, so, so you are what comfortable with the thirteen thousand index? Uh, what would a one year forward look like? Uh, so we we actually have only around four percent upside or so from here as far as our official uh, target is concerned. So if you look at the Sensex, our Sensex target is around forty one thousand, so which is barely three okay. three to four percent uh, above current levels. Uh, but then there would be individual bottom up stock picks uh, which could seriously outperform, especially if certain areas like autos mm -hmm. and financial sector, if we see a recovery there. Okay. What can be the positive global surprises? A slowing down in the escalating tensions between China and the US and more importantly, um, less targeting of individual countries. I mean... That's uh, not your base case. Not our base case at the moment. We don't think the tensions are fully factored in, um, although there is some valuation support. However, we're in a situation where, where there are outflows. But that could be the uh, ultimate surprise, but is it an expectation before or post the G20? Uh, not, not currently. Okay. So in your pecking order, uh India would rank higher than any other country? So we have, um, in EM Asia, we actually have um, China, Korea, Taiwan and Thailand as our overweights. Okay. And that is because of valuations. Uh, India is, is currently neutral in, in that order, yet India is attracting uh, money at the expense of those other countries. Um, if there are further shocks, then those valuations will get cheaper. Okay. So in the short term at least, India will continue to outperform unless we get a positive surprise around, around the trade situation. Okay, so that's the opinion coming in from City, and you'll get to hear excerpts of that conversation through the day. But at this point in time, just want to point out that for the Nifty, there's a little more of profit booking which is coming in. So we're down around 50-odd points. And there was some news with regards to IFC, BPCL and HPCL, where they have struck a joint venture, which will be for a pipeline going all the way from Gujarat to UP. And IOC will be holding around 50% in the JV, whereas IOC, uh, BPCL and HPCL,